breaking news, Ship 36 has just exploded during its latest test and the timing couldn't be more dramatic. The incident occurred just moments after the FAA officially confirmed the launch date for Flight 10, exactly as many had predicted. What caused the failure? and how much damage did it inflict on the Massey test pad? In other developments, Japan's Honda has completed a major milestone with its first rocket test, and Firefly Aerospace has unveiled a new lunar imaging system that could revolutionize how we study the moon. Let's break it all down in today's episode of Great SpaceX. We are now deep into June, and anticipation is building as SpaceX races to meet Musk's three to four week target for Starship's next mission. Hopes were high that Flight 10 could launch before the end of the month, but in a sudden and dramatic twist, a key step toward the goal ended in disaster. Ship 36 has been destroyed in a catastrophic explosion. The incident occurred during a static fire test attempt at the Massey test site. After successfully completing a single engine test, S-36 was set to fire all six of its Raptor engines in a preparation for flight. The site was cleared, fueling began, and the procedure initially appeared to proceed as expected, but something was clearly off. This process appeared to take longer than expected. The venting activity was inconsistent, at times strong, and at other times weak, which signaled that something might have been wrong. Then, at approximately 11.02 p.m., a massive explosion suddenly occurred. Based on the sheer magnitude of the blast, it was immediately clear that this was not a planned engine ignition. Instead, it was a catastrophic event that completely destroyed S-36. Flames and smoke erupted into the sky, illuminating the entire Massey test site for several minutes afterward. Given the scale of the explosion, it is highly unlikely that S-36 survived. Additionally, the surrounding infrastructure, including the test stand and nearby fuel tanks, may have also sustained damage. Within moments of the incident, emergency crews and fire trucks were dispatched to manage the situation. A few hours later, the company provided an official statement on X, saying, On Wednesday, June 18th, at approximately 11 p.m. Central, the Starship preparing for the 10th flight test experienced a major anomaly while on a test stand at Starbase. A safety clear area around the site was maintained throughout the operation and all personnel are safe and accounted for. Our Starbase team is actively working to safe the test site and the immediate surrounding area in conjunction with local officials. There are no hazards to residents in surrounding communities and we ask that individuals do not attempt to approach the area while safing operations continue. At this stage, SpaceX has not yet released a detailed explanation of the root cause of the failure. However, it is possible to speculate based on the available information. One likely scenario is that there was a leak somewhere in the system, potentially within the fuel tank or engine assembly. If that leaking propellant came into contact with exposed wiring or a heat source, it could have ignited and caused a chain reaction. The result would be a rapidly spreading fire that led to the violent explosion, destroying the vehicle entirely. Further updates from SpaceX SpaceX will be necessary to confirm exactly what went wrong. This setback couldn't have come at a worse time. Just hours earlier, the Federal Aviation Administration had issued an official notice confirming June 29th as the primary launch date for Flight 10, with the 30th as a backup. The approved launch window spans from 6.30 p.m. to 8.34 p.m., allowing for flexibility in both booster and ship landings. Had everything gone to plan, Flight 10 could have marked a series of important milestones for SpaceX. Not only would it have been the second time Starship launched in back-to-back -back months, just like the earlier pairs of Flight 5 and 6, it also would have set a new record for turnaround time between missions. The current record stands at 44 days. A launch on June 29th would have cut that to just 37, and June 30th would mean 38 days, both remarkable achievements for a heavy lift system. Additionally, a June flight would have positioned SpaceX to meet or exceed its goal of multiple Starship launches in 2025. With four flights already completed this year, a successful Flight 10 would have kept the schedule on track for an even more ambitious second half. On the hardware front, B-16 is progressing well. It has completed inspections following its recent static fire, and its hot staging ring has been successfully integrated. The flight termination system has also been moved to the Mega Bay for installation. Once complete, B-16 could roll out to the launch pad by the 24th or the 25th. 
Unfortunately, the loss of Shift 36 changes everything. With the vehicle now gone and the Massey site likely out of service for repairs, SpaceX must pivot quickly. Shift 37 is the most likely candidate to replace 36, but before it can proceed, Massey must be evaluated, repaired, and recertified for use, a process that could take days or even weeks. A July launch is still possible, but the schedule now hinges on how fast SpaceX can recover from this setback. The company has a track record of rebounding quickly, often using failures as opportunities to refine its systems and processes. That said, this delay could have ripple effects on the rest of the year's flight cadence if not addressed swiftly. So, what do you think? Can SpaceX still meet its summer timeline for Flight 10? Share your thoughts in the comments by replying yes or no. And if you stand with the team through this challenging moment, type let's come back soon to show your support. Up next, we move on to an exciting update from Japan as Honda continues to expand its role in the space industry. On the 17th, Honda, a company traditionally known for its automobiles, carried out a successful vertical takeoff and landing test with a reusable rocket prototype. This test was designed to evaluate the rocket's ability to launch and land vertically with precision and control. The event took place at Honda's dedicated site in Taiki, Hokkaido, a location often referred to as Japan's space town due to its growing concentration of aerospace activity. The test lasted a total of 56 seconds. During that time, the rocket lifted off, reached an altitude of 271.4 meters, or around 890 feet, and then descended smoothly, touching down just 37 centimeters away from the targeted landing spot. The entire launch, ascent, descent, and landing sequence went off without any major issues. Honda confirmed afterward that the rocket met all performance expectations at each step of the test. The vehicle used in the test is a compact, reusable design. According to specifications released by Honda, the rocket stands at 6.3 meters tall, has a diameter of 85 centimeters, and weighs 900 kilograms when dry and 1,312 kilograms when fully fueled. It features a sleek white body, four folding landing legs, and grid fins mounted near the nose cone to assist with navigation and stability during descent. Following the success of this recent demonstration, Honda has confirmed plans to conduct additional tests aimed at reaching suborbital altitudes. In its roadmap, Honda noted, Although Honda's rocket research is still in the fundamental research phase and no decisions have been made regarding the commercialization of these technologies, the company will continue to pursue this project with the goal of achieving suborbital launch capability by 2029. In fact, Honda first revealed its rocket ambitions in 2021 when it announced that its reusable engine combustion test had already been completed successfully. The company has also collaborated with the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency to study the technologies needed for human spaceflight. This development is part of a larger trend in Japan's space sector. In the past, JAXA handled nearly all rocket-related operations in the country. However, recent years have seen a surge of private aerospace companies emerge, including Interstellar Technologies, Space one and innovative space carrier. Honda's entry into the field further signals Japan's intention to become more autonomous in space, especially in terms of launching its own payloads without depending heavily on foreign partners. Japan has long demonstrated its commitment to international space collaboration, such as contributing the Kibo laboratory module to the International Space Station and attempting multiple lunar landings. However, increasing domestic launch capability is key to elevating the country's standing in the global space race. Honda's growing presence in the sector is a promising step Step in that direction. And now, let's shift focus to a new system being developed by Firefly Aerospace that aims to revolutionize lunar exploration. Firefly recently announced the creation of a new lunar imaging service known as Ocula. The company shared this news via its X account. After the first successful commercial moon landing, we have another first in the works, introducing Ocula, a commercial lunar imaging service offered through our Elytra orbiters. Further details were provided by Firefly CEO Jason Kim, who stated, Powered by a constellation of Elytra vehicles in lunar orbit and eventually Mars orbit, Ocula will provide critical data that informs future human and robotic missions and supports national security with intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. This service will fill a void for our nation with advanced lunar imaging capabilities and a sustainable commercial business model. The Elytra spacecraft, which serve as the platform for Ocula, is designed for versatility. Firefly envisions it being used not only in Earth orbit, but also in deep space missions, including lunar operations. For the Ocula service, these vehicles will be equipped with high-resolution imaging telescopes developed in partnership with the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, a renowned U.S. Department of Energy research facility. According to Firefly, the Ocula scopes will be capable of resolving surface features as small as 8 inches or 0.2 meters from an altitude of about 31 miles or 50 kilometers above the moon. 
They will also offer imaging in the ultraviolet and visible light spectrums. This will allow scientists to conduct advanced surface analysis, identify valuable resources like ilmenite, which can indicate the presence of helium-3, and monitor objects in cislunar space for both civil and defense purposes. Importantly, Ocula will also aid in identifying suitable landing sites for future robotic and human missions. Firefly plans to make this data available to both government agencies and commercial customers through licensing agreements. Looking ahead, if development proceeds as scheduled, Ocula will begin operations in 2026. The first Ocula-equipped Elytra will launch as part of the second Blue Ghost Lunar Lander mission, which will touch down on the far side of the moon and deliver a European Space Agency probe into orbit. A second Elytra mission carrying an Ocula scope is scheduled for 2028. If these missions prove successful, Firefly plans to continue expanding the Ocula network with additional launches in the years that follow. Initially, Elytra will serve as a communications relay for Blue Ghost and its onboard payloads throughout the lander's two-week surface mission. Once that mission concludes, Elytra will transition to its role in the Ocula imaging program, which is expected to run for more than five years. Firefly has stated, we will expand our constellation of Elytra vehicles in lunar orbit to further enhance the ocular surface. This will enable faster revisit times for situational awareness, resource detection, and mission planning. In the longer term, this service can also be extended to Mars and other planetary bodies. It's clear that Firefly is positioning itself as a major player in the commercial moon race. Their progress in lander development, combined with innovative programs like Ocula, reflects the company's growing influence in both science and space commerce. So, between Honda's promising new rocket and Firefly's bold lunar imaging initiative, the race to space is accelerating from every angle. Let's keep watching to see where these ambitious new paths lead. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.